Last week we looked at Joshua and we started at chapter 1, verses 1 to 10, um, which was outlined in the great faith and obedience uh, to God. Moses had died and now it was a time for a new generation to receive God's promise and who better to leave them than good, faithful, obedient man of the Lord, Joshua. Joshua, into the promised land. Well, today we pick up on the story. We pick up on the story as it is now for Joshua to tell his people. To tell his people. Uh, some of the thoughts I just want to bring to your mind that could have been going through Joshua's mind or could have gone through any leader's mind. Probably wasn't Joshua's mind at the time, but leader's mind. How will they react on the mind, would have been on the mind. After all, it's now 40 years that have passed. How will we cross? Do you know what? That river was at the worst swollen time and treacherous overflowing its banks from the snow melt from Mount Hermon. At this time of the year, maybe on this leader's mind. And will they listen to me? Might it be not any leader's mind? Will they listen to me? But not for Joshua. Why? Because, as we have already outlined, he was a man of great faith and obedience. He was a man for the job. He was a man for the job. The question is, how would you have acted in this situation? How would we act in this situation? If we was told, if we was told to actually lead a nation you know into the promised land would they have been our questions but Lord but Lord but Lord you know go and read from uh, verses 10 to 19 but before we do let's just pray Heavenly Father we just thank you we praise you we bless you you're a great God you are a great God indeed we just pray that you 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 just speak into us this morning. Speak into us in, in the ways that you want us to listen to. The, 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 the nuggets, give us some nuggets of, of your word today. We pray for the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, to move in this place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we go read from, uh, I think it's Joshua 1, verses 10 to 19. And this week we've got it up on screen. Last week I was, uh, I was asked, where's the screen gone? Where's the screen gone? This week we're back. We're back. It was my fault last week, may I say, because I forgot to give the scripture to, to, uh, to, to Julian. So don't go blaming Julian for last week. My fault. I take responsibility. Okay, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan, you to go and take possession of the land of the Lord. The Lord, is, your God, is giving you for your own. But the Reubites and the Gadites and the half tribes of the Messiah, Joshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after. He said, the Lord, your God, will give you rest by giving you their land. Your wives, children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you, east of Jordan. But all your fighting men ready for battle must cross ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest, as he has done for you, and until they have taken possession of the land the Lord your God has given them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Mo Moses, the servant of the Lord, gives you east of Georgia, Jordan, towards the sunrise. Then they answered, Joshua, whatever you've commanded us to do, we will. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against his word and does not obey it, whenever you command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and contagious. Only be strong and contagious. Wow. Wow. 
What can we learn here? What we can learn about this piece of scripture? As we've already established last week, Joshua was to lead his people into a promised land. He was a type of Jesus to the people of Israel, the Israelites. He was to lead them to the promised land. See, like Christ, Joshua did what Moses and the law could not do. He was to lead the people into Canaan. Christ leads people to a promised land. We call it heaven. As we refer to it, and both Joshua and Jesus began their commission on the banks of the Jordan River. Was that an accident? I don't think so. I don't think so. Perhaps what amazes me so much, what amazes me so much, is in no record of nation querying how would they get across so quickly in three days. It doesn't say, go and get your boats. He doesn't say that. He says, get your provisions. Three days to get your position, provisions before we cross the Jordan. You know? How would it get across so quickly in three days? As we already learned, a treacherous river would, oh, would have come to overcome if they were to take the land. See, the moment you decide to take Christ as your saviour, God puts you on a journey. God puts you on a journey. On this journey. Joshua was an humble man who, like his mentor, Moses, understood he could not accomplish the awesome task before him without completely dependence on God. You know, do we try and do everything in our own strength? Have we got total dependence on God? See, Joshua knew God would take care of the details. God always takes care of the details. You know, we don't have to worry about the details because God will take care of that. We need to understand, church, we can't do the task God's given us in our own strength. We can't do that. He could not do that in his own strength, as you will see as we go further on, of how he crossed the river. You probably already know the story. You're probably sitting there, well, this happened. Yes, it did. Yeah, and we will see that. Yeah. See, the journey of a Christian is not easy. It would not be easier to take the promised land in their own strength. Only 40 years earlier, they had sent spies into the promised land. This was the time Joshua wanted to take the land. Caleb wanted to take the land. But they were outvoted, as you could say. They were outvoted. And it led to 40 years in the wilderness. And God is now saying, this is a time. This is a time. We saw that last week. He's saying, this is a time. See, God wants you and me to come to the promised land, to cross the promised land. But first we need to trust and obey and accept the task. It's as simple as that. We accept the task. What task has God given us? Or you, you may ask. The task that he gives us all who accept to follow him as a saviour. You know, Arietta Myers says this. Take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you for your own. It is God to give. It is not ours to, it is ours to possess. It is God to give, ours to possess. I quite like that. I quite like that. You know, it's not ours. It wasn't ours to give, it was God to give. God gave his only son that we may have eternal life. But we can possess, possess it. Joshua completes what Moses began. God never leaves his work unfinished. Let me tell you that. Never leaves his work unfinished. Remember the great craftsman? Always have another tool, sharpened and ready to use. Service awakes everyone. You can always honour God best by taking up your task with a strong and resolute heart that trusts God. Joshua led them into a life of faith. Joshua was to lead them into the possession, as we will see as we go through. He will lead us them into that. Church, Paul wrote this. Do you know that in a race, all the runners run, but 
only one gets a prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Wow. You know, we need to do this. It's not what we can't do, but what we can do in Christ. What we can do in Christ. We can do all things with Christ who strengthens us. We've seen that, hasn't we? You at Lightness Community Church, we're not phased by the size of the task. Are we phased by the size of the task that is given us? No, we're not phased by the size of the task. If we were, we were given up a long time ago. We're not phased by the size of the task that we have here. Yeah? Why? Because if God has said it, he will give us the provisions to succeed. All we have to do is listen to God, be faithful, not give up, and accept the task. And that's all these people had to do. As, it's okay. As, um, as Joshua was already given the task, he was to give it to the people. And this is what he's doing now. He is to get ready, you know. But to the Rimunites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Messiah, Messiah, I can't remember the name, don't I? Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you the land. Your wives and children and your livestock will stay in the land that Moses gives you, east of Jordan. But all your fighting men, ready for battle, must cross ahead from the fellow Israelites. They must, in other words, give the hand, uh, hand to the Israelites. It was a promise. You know, we all have part to play in church. You know, we can all sit back and we and say, well, I'm satisfied with what I've got. I know where I'm going. We can all do that, can't we? Well, let me tell you, I believe we will miss out if we do that on what God has for us now. God has for us now. These tribes have asked Moses if they could settle just east from the promised land, as it was excellent for their flocks. Moses agreed to give them a land on condition they would help their fellow tribes to conquer and take the promised land. And only when this would be done, they could return home. Only when that was done, they, they could return home. It's there. See, they, this tri these tribes did not make their home in the promised land. They failed to have a share in what God wanted them to have there. The land at the east of the Jordan was only part of what God wants his people to receive. You know, it could be said they're like Christians who do not get completely involved in Christian things. They do not go to church very often, perhaps. They do not meet with other Christians. They do not help at the local church, perhaps. So they're not getting what God wants them to have. You know? You know, C.S. Lewis said this about church, and I, I quite like what he said. He says, the church exists for nothing else but to draw men into Christ. Amen. C.S. Lewis says that. Yeah. See, if all the nation tried to enter and conquer the promised land in their own way, it would have been chaos. They said, off you go, nation. We've got to get across in, in three days. You know, do what you want. I'll see you across there. You know, if Joshua said, I'll see you across there, man. I'll meet you across on the other side. What do you, it would have been chaos, wouldn't it? Everyone would have, you know, it was an enormous task. This wasn't no small task. This was an enormous task. We saw last week how many people were involved here. I think it was, some, it was over a million, wasn't it? It's 20 million or something like that. It was enormous. This was a nation. This wasn't an easy task like half a dozen people just crossing over the water to the promised land. This was to organize a mammoth task. A mammoth task. Everyone would have to agree to the leader's plan, willing to support and obey. If we are to complete the task God has given us, even in the church here in Sebastopol, to impact this community, and I believe he has given us a task to complete, impact this community. I believe that, yeah? We must fully agree to his plan, pledge ourselves to obey it, and put God's principles in action. I'm not saying we don't. I'm saying, you know, we must do that if we are going to see and complete that task. Then they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us to do and wherever you send us, we will go. 
Will we do our walk with Christ? What you have been commanded, or what we have been commanded, and we will go where He sends us. Do you remember that song? I don't know if you remember that song. I, the Lord, sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night. I will make the darkness bright. Who will be my light to them? Whom shall I send? And the chorus is, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have viewed you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. Wow, what a chorus that is, you know. I think when people just sing that as a mighty church, how many people would do that? They sing it, yeah? And it's a very catchy song. But here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. Then they ask you, Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Well, that must have been delight to, uh, to Joshua, mustn't it? A leader challenged to get this across to all them people. And then they actually say, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you go, we'll see you. Don't forget, they had seen what disobedience can do. They had seen their forefathers not given access to the promised land because of disobedience. So now, the new generation is saying, whatever, yeah, we will do it. Yeah, we want this promised land. We want it. We're with you. Yeah? And they answered, not the two tribes answered, and half, as people think when they read this, but the officers, all the people in the name, concurring with the divine appointment by which Joshua had sent over them. You know, we must swear, and the answer, you know, not, as I said, not the two tribes and only half, but the officers and the people in the name, concurring with divine appointment, but Joshua set over them. This we must swear allegiance. You know, we must swear allegiance to our Lord Jesus. He is a captain of our salvation. He is a captain of our salvation. Nobody else. Verse 18 is interesting. See, the people encouraging Joshua with the same words God had given him. God had given him these same words three times previously. Be strong and contagious. Have a look back. Three times he was given these. You know? I, I think when you see something in the Bible more than once given to it, I think God really wants us to take this on board. Yeah? You know? I, I think when we see something there and, 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 and then we see it again and again and again, it's something I believe that God wants us to take on board. Every one of us. He wants us to be strong and create courageous. And in today's world... We certainly, as Christians, need to be strong and courageous. It's, it, we certainly do. Yeah? We in the church need to stand strong and courageous. Now, what, what have we gained what, through, through these, through these uh, verses? Well, let me tell you. We need to be prepared and trust God. We need to be prepared and trust God. Don't give up whatever we are going through. Whatever you are going through, God will give the courage and strength if you let him. I want to I, I just uh, share a note that um, I was passed last week before um, at the end of the service after we spoke about Joshua. And it's a note of encouragement. I believe this is a note of encouragement. Uh, it's a prophetic word. A prophetic word that was given. And uh, I'm going to read the note. I, I don't think Beverly would mind me reading the note, would she? No? Yeah? 
Mrs. Shea as an encouragement? Thank you. When Pastor away said to keep on praying today after worship, I got a real sense that we were on the cusp of something new. Real change, I had, and have sense. Before that, our prayers were joining those who had prayed in faith all over the area. Before and that, there was power in that. Wayne said something in the prayer today about our prayers joining those who had gone before us. Then God gave me a picture of an hourglass and just the last grains of sand to fall. To fall through, sorry. I then asked God to give me a scripture to go. And what I felt God was saying to me, he gave me Jeremiah 29, 11 and onwards. This is one of my favourite verses. Plans to prosper us and not harm us. To give us hope and a future. I do feel change is coming, but we also need to keep pushing ahead and not get disappointed. As I've said before, it doesn't matter what negative things have been said over this area. God is bigger and he has a plan and he will accomplish what he has set out to do. Amen? Amen. What a great, um, what a great uh, um, note to finish on. What a great note to finish on, I think. And I just want to, uh, just before we finish, I know I said what a great note to finish on, but I'm always doing this. Um, Ivan Jensen says this about the, the scripture we, we, we are studying. The average Christian knows the New Testament better than he does the Old, and this is understandable. But the Bible is one book, and the Christian who neglects a major part of it forfeit in rich blessings intended for his own soul. There are two good reasons why every Christian should acquaint with the book of Joshua. First, you should know it is for its historical past and contemporary value. The Jewish nation has never declaimed title to the land deed of Palestine, which God gave to his forefathers, and which is appropriate under Joshua. From biblical prophecy and the stirrings of coming events, it's obviously the most dramatic history of the land is yet to be written. Second, the book of Joshua is filled with spiritual lessons on how we Christians may live victorious life. Amen.